Keep my name out your mouth. Now listen up. The tradition of Festivus begins with, with the airing of grievances. I got a lot of problems with you people. But now it's back to the lab. So would you please listen, 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 Happy Festivus, everyone! Hello, hello, hello. We've got a lot of problems with you people here for the third last episode of the Hungry Gamers for 2021. I am your extremely humble and maybe disgruntled host for Festivus reasons, Brendan White. You can find me on them socials at Brendan 8-Bit. And joining me today, my podcast, Ride or Die, the keeper of the Festivus poll. You can find her on them socials at Miss Ellie Hart. I don't know what I was doing there. Miss Ellie Hart, welcome to Festivus 2021. Oh, I'm like going to say some joke about polishing the poll, getting it ready for Festivus. Um, my favorite, favorite, one of my favorite uh, shows that we do, actually. Nothing like a good old grief session, a little bit of complaining, a little pointing out of everything that's wrong in the world. Exactly. And clearly nothing is wrong with you or I. It is everyone else that is in the wrong that is uh, causing the disappointments and the frustration and the grief and the anger and sadness. So, uh, yeah, it is our annual Whinge Fest where (laughs) we come together and uh, we bring members of the community together to uh, share their disappointments and their pain that 2021 has uh, brought them, Um, you know, and we do it. We do it with a smile. You know, uh, forewarning, you know, there, there might be some negativity getting thrown around here, but uh, you know, a lot of it is for the laughs and uh, we're trying to do it in a lighthearted manner that is constructive and, you know, we, we don't want to fall into the cesspool that is uh, internet social media piling on. You know, we will throw shade here or there, but we'll try and do it from a, from a good way. Tastefully, yeah. Yeah, tasteful. That's a perfect word to, uh, to sort of... Um, yeah, describe what we're doing here at the Hungry Gamers. We are very tasteful in our in our slander. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, we're not talking any news. We're not talking what we've been playing or what we've been doing. We are just here to air out some grievances for video games, the game industry, towards ourselves, and anything else we want to sort of throw some shade at. It's it's pretty fast and loose here mm. at Festivus 2021. But Miss Hart, what do you think? Do you think we should jump into the first? Segment of Festivus 2021. Let's get this party started. Yay, yay. Biggest gaming disappointments. Let's rumble! All right, so we are talking, obviously, from that fantastic drop that Miss Hart provided us. Biggest gaming disappointments of 2021. So uh, first, we might look outwards to the 8-Bit Nation and uh, jump through... Uh, you know, we can deep dive on any of these. So whenever you're feeling feeling uh, a bit frisky and you want to add some weight to these statements, Miss Hart, dive on in, swing yeah. them punches, throw them verbal onslaughts. And the first one uh, from Huzo over at play2.net. Delays, so goddamn many of them. Mm-hmm. Very, very true. Miss Hart, what do you think? Should I jump, maybe rattle these off? machine gun style and then should we jump back into some how do you want to how do you want to flow with this with this discourse oh like let's let's rattle them off and let's pinpoint some ones that maybe we can also dogpile on fair call fair call i'm ready for dogpiling okay we've got another one here new world bought into the hype but the repetition killed it for me and i'm just going to jump down another two because we had another person here very disgruntled about new world New World, it released with a lot of new content, but the questing was so uh, repetitive and poorly laid out, it felt like you were just running back and forth for a different old man slapping the same enemies three to five times in a period Mm. of 10 quests. So, Miss Hart, I for one am happy that I have not played New World because, uh, yeah, Jakey and Aussie Tex, they've got some strong opinions about the repetition and the vanilla copy-paste nonsense that is Amazon's MMORPG. Sounds rough. It sounds very rough. Have you had any inkling at all to play this? No. Any itch needs a scratching? No. Like or is that when a different topic altogether? There was like the beta or testing that they did and I was just like, this doesn't look like my kind of thing. And then there was the hype where everyone was playing it on launch and people couldn't get in. It was so busy. It was so hectic. 
And then, like, I just noticed that essentially, like, what our listeners said, like, I'm like, this kind of looks like the same thing. It just feels very repetitive. <laughs> Destiny player. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, so I, I had no reason to kind of give it a try. Yeah, I, I got I got no skin in the New World game and I refuse to put any type of skin, even even just general follicles that you're losing from day to day. Any of those little bits of skin that's just floating out in the air. New World's getting none of that. That's all coming back to me. Ooh. I don't know why. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'm certainly going to invest in a bit of Final Fantasy XIV with the Endwalker expansion that's just dropped. I'm going to be smacking around in that over Christmas break. But uh, moving on, a couple more... Uh, Gaming disappointments. Battlefield 2042, total pile of garbage. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, another one here. COD Vanguard, same old, same old. So there's a lot of a uh, lot of themes here as far as these yearly or you know semi annually shooters. You know your battlefields, your CODs. There seems to be a bit of discourse going around those uh, those traps. Uh, Mech Warrior Five Mercenaries. Got a bit of shade there from Grox. Was not a fan. Oh. Uh, next one. Availability of the newer consoles. Be buggered if I'm going to sit on Twitter or a website refreshing to even get a chance at a drop. True. You should T-Rocket. have to do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, um, I'm smirking here with the be buggered. I, I love that term. Like, you know, I couldn't be buggered doing that or bugger off. Buggered needs to be utilized more in the English vocabulary. Does anyone want to hear a tale of my international relationship where yes. I was, uh, I went to the gym in Australia and told my uh, husband in America that like, I just came back from the gym and I'm buggered. And opposed to asking me, he decided to Google what buggered meant and <laughs> sent me a screenshot. <laughs> yeah. Buggery He's is like, uh, what did you, you do? Know, with we, the gym? <laughs> yeah. We, we don't use the, the word as it's, globally known as i guess the the term that we use utilize it for is very different to the mm. the english dictionary meaning so uh be careful with the with the use of buggery that's all i have to say especially yeah if, if you're uh in a relationship with someone not from australia yes. i'll be like oh boy are you okay do i need to call the police but yeah newer consoles still console shortages it is still an absolute madhouse out there uh, you know, we, we've talked periodically throughout the whole year as far as supply issues with componentry and things like that. And sadly, looking at it from the technology side of the fence from, from my nine to five, they're forecasting other 12 to 18 months of this pain. Oh, so man. these PlayStation 5s and Xbox Series Xs or Ss or, you know, uh, 3080 Ti's and all these, all these PC peripherals and uh, components, it's going to be tough to get your hands on them. So, uh, yeah, we might all be buggered and have to sit on Twitter or a website refreshing to try and get that drop because uh, it's tough sledding out there. Mm. Uh, we've got a little bit more shade. Battlefield 2042 comes up again, as well as the GTA Trilogy. Yes. Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy, has that uh, caused some drama out there. Console shortages and a lack of next-gen exclusives. True. Yeah. Which yeah. I didn't even think about that much until I saw uh, saw Morgan's response there regarding the next gen exclusive. It's like, yeah, like we've had some we've had some great releases this year or mm-hmm. in the past, say, twelve months since PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series X slash S have been in our hands for those lucky few that have them. But a lot of those games obviously have been released not just on those platforms, but on the prior gen as well. So you don't get that in air quotes true. Next gen exclusive. Some of the games mm. we've gotten have been phenomenal. Returnal is another one for PlayStation Five. So PlayStation have been uh, knocking out of the park. But then you've got you know, things like Forza, which is exclusive. next gen, current gen as well, and X Cloud. So yeah, where's yeah. the prestige, Miss Hart? You missed out. Where's the elitism and the exclusivity of next gen? Where are you, games? <laughs> Maybe elitism is a bit too harsh, but you know what? You gotta you gotta let those old consoles go. Yeah. Need the incentive. Oh, it's, I guess it's Catch Twenty Two, isn't it? It's like you need the incentive to buy the console, but you can't buy the console because there's component shortages. <laughs> so maybe they do have to release them, so they kind of work with your current tech as well. So what do I know? I'm just a fool here on a microphone. Uh, the next one, <laughs> Benny, with his gaming disappointment, Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance. Uh, oh. Yeah, I was all in on that game for about thirty-five seconds. 
Yeah. And then I was all out and I haven't even thought about it since. Oh. I Did you play it at all? No, I don't I don't believe I did. I don't think I even tested it. It was fun. Like it's you know, real time RPGing with yourself and three other friends is four unique classes from the the Dungeon and Dragon universe, but it was very repetitive. Slash, slash, cast, cast. I mean, it's very difficult to kind of launch something like that, um, especially when we had um, a lot of Baldur's Gate coming, um, you know, uh, to people's hands and stuff. And then what was the other? What's the other one that people like? It's the one that NATO nags me to play all the time. And that seems like it's very much on the same vein. (laughs) League of Legends, he nagged you to play a lot. Um, <laughs> Black Desert Online. No. I bet um, you he's yelling it right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to think about it, but it's a, it's a, a kind of the same kind of concept of like a fantasy adventure. I don't, I know that you could also like create your own maps and stuff in it and he was very excited and tried to get me to buy it. So I'll mm. have to figure out which one it was. Yeah, the Pusher Man. He's uh he's on that corner and he's like, what are you buying all the time? And it's like just forcing these video game drugs into your systems. Speaking of systems, Nasi says, where's me Nintendo Switch 4K Pro? As far as his gaming disappointments. Obviously, we got some Nintendo Switch Pro that, that came out uh, five weeks ago now, six weeks Amazing. ago, I think. Mm-hmm. And yeah, no 4K. Obviously, it's a bigger screen, uh, slightly better feel, enhanced audio little graphical bump but it's still very distant as far as processing power comparative to the the fixed consoles and then also the you know the steam deck whenever the hell that thing's going to come out now obviously with delays on that yeah but uh yeah bit of bit of nintendo discourse is never a bad thing then uh mama loz she said not being able to play twisted metal world tour because uh she can't seem to get her hands on an original playstation to uh rumble around as Sweet Tooth and Axel and those other dudes in it that game that I can't remember. Yeah, let's try to get them. You, you can't get any version of a console now, it seems. No. Not the old ones, Mama, you want the new ones? Too yeah. bad. Mama, you're just going to have to wait till the Twisted Metal uh, show it's makes serious, its way. Yeah. I think it's on Netflix. Is, Is it, it Netflix picked it up or was it Amazon? I can't remember. can't remember which one, but yeah, they're, they're talking about it. I don't know if yeah, I've seen one much of else from it. Will it be good? Maybe not. But uh, it's going to scratch that nostalgia itch of Twisted Metal World Tour uh, mm. and running over those poor little innocent people just walking around, just trying to get home or get get to the shops to get some milk. And then a, a big uh, two-wheeled vehicle with the man attached in the middle just runs them down for no reason because uh, that's, that's how you roll. Uh, we've got a little soundbite we're going to chuck in here before we start sharing our disappointments gaming-related for 2021. So here is Jesse from Story Mode... Hi, I'm Jesse from Story Mode, a video game podcast. My grievance goes back to July 2020, when we first got a glimpse of a a game that was going to change me as a person. Being a massive Far Cry fan, I wanted something new from the franchise after Far Cry 5 was a little bit hit or miss. I did love the ending, though. And the other games, like New Dawn, uh, the ending was garbage there, and Primal, and look, it's been rocky since Far Cry 3. (laughs) But this one showed promise. Far Cry 6 had Giancarlo Esposito in it. And Gus Fring. It's a beautiful Caribbean island. Uh, makeshift weapons. A gold tooth crocodile. A cute little pooch. It was meant to be a festivist miracle. But what we got this year, this October, after months of delays, was garbage. Far Cry 6 sucked. And I don't understand how. Ubisoft has put in half assed RPG elements... It's a world packed to the brim with tedium. The, the chaotic fun of the last few Far Cry games was just replaced with chaos. Nothing worked, so I didn't want to do anything. It's the first Far Cry game I've never completed, and I probably won't go back to it, despite the repetitive emails asking me to. It feels like Ubisoft took all the worst parts of Assassin's Creed Valhalla and shoved them into Far Cry. <laughs> I didn't finish Valhalla either, and I'm not going to. Game's too big. The worst part of this is, was this our last chance to get a proper Far Cry game? They're going to move to that live service model that sounds not great. I think Far Cry may be done. And look, I'm just going to go back and play more Far Cry 3. And in the grand scheme of things, is this the worst thing that Ubisoft has done this year? Not even close. And we're talking grievances, not actual crimes. (sighs) 
I don't know, Far Cry 6. I think you burnt me a bit too much here. But like I said, Far Cry 3 is still around. I'm going to play that instead. And that's my biggest grievance of 2021. Except for, you know, the world ending. Anyway, enjoy Festivus, everyone. That was amazing. Well, okay. <laughs> that was so Jesse funny. with some strong, strong opinions on Far Cry 6. Yeah. Doesn't sound wrong. Doesn't sound wrong at all. It sounds very wrong to me, Miss Hart. Like, I, I'm i a big fan of Far Cry 6. We did a spoiler cast on Far Cry 6 know. about how much I was a big fan of said game. Yeah, and Giancarlo Esposito, he anchored that game for me. And, you know, yeah, there is Guapo, the, the crocodile with the gold tooth, as well as all the other random little creatures and uh, companions that you roll around in. But I thought it was a damn good game. I really enjoyed it. I think with this game, it's definitely like split in the middle. There's like a lot of people who maybe enjoyed it to the same you know sense that you did, but I've heard a lot of people mention the same kind of things that Jesse did, and and I like the mention of the stupid emails telling people to come back. Yeah, it, it took me a second to connect that dot. Like I thought it was just like no, PR happen. company or people like that listen to Story Mode Gaming. Be, be sure to go check out Story Mode when you can as yes. well on socials. They they stream also on Twitch. Be sure to peek them. We'll chuck their link in the show notes. But I thought it was like maybe their fans saying, like emailing Jesse saying, Jesse, nope. go back and finish <laughs> Fire Cry 6. I forgot about that where it was actually people like on the, in air quotes, front lines in the game saying, you know, come back, we need you. We need to finish the game and save people and complete the mission. And yeah, so good. Yeah, I love that. I I, I can see that being like a few people's grievance for the year, to be honest. <laughs> I, I'm i hurt. I'm hurt. Jesse <laughs> Jesse is a, is a good fellow. I've realized he, he lives uh, a couple of suburbs north of me. So we're going to get a beer in, in like over the Chrissy break. Oh, I thought you were going to. <laughs> I'm going to go Eggie's house for uh, besmirching the good name of Far Cry 6. Yeah, it's, it's tempting. Some eggs, maybe t- TP the, the front yard. Do people uh, still do that? I don't know. I haven't seen it here yet. It's a premium though, obviously with uh, the, clo- the the crisis and the shortage of components. True, you know, it's gold. That TP, yeah, he'll be thankful for me throwing it through his front yard and around his trees because he could probably on-sell that for high profit. So, yeah, but too harsh. Far too harsh on Far Cry 6. The story is great. You, you need to finish it because there is some big, big emotional gut punches that happen in there and you need to experience more of that Giancarlo magnetism. He just draws you in and sucks you in with every syllable that comes out of his angry mouth and it's so good and the combat is chaotic and I love it and the weapons are great and I love the location and I love the soundtrack Jesse you are just a hater my friend unnecessarily (laughs) but I also understand where you're coming from because you also love Frasier so much and you said you nearly bought a Frasier t-shirt on the Black Friday sales so boo you Boo you for nearly buying a Fraser shirt. I'm, I'm all for it. <gasps> all right, Miss Hart. <clears throat> let's let's get off this uh this sandbox. Yeah, let's get off this sandbox before I get too too wound up about people talking smack about Far Cry Six. So, Miss Hart, what is your biggest gaming disappointments or disappointment of twenty? 20- 21. I guess technically mine, this is like the biggest gaming disappointment for six years. Um, was it six? Roughly around there. Uh, 12 minutes. Uh, yeah. Everyone got to witness me hyping this game for years. So excited about this game for years. Um, like couldn't wait, looking forward to it. It got like pushed back. It got delayed a little. It got the inclusion of some fantastic actors in it. Like it was, it was this wonderful whimsy roller coaster of this game that like I heard about years and years ago at an indie event. And then it finally came out and it just was nothing like I had hoped it would be. And it, got a lot of backlash it got a lot of uh negativity in the presses and such and yeah that one really hurt that one like really really hurt because it's like one of those things where it it has that indie attachment to it so I never want to like besmirch someone out there trying their best and doing something especially on the indie level but I just like I I just couldn't you know keep rose tinted glasses on and just admit the fact that this game was just too rough yeah it was um 
Yeah, we, we bought into the media hype. We bought into the celebrity. We bought into, oh my God, this voice cast. This is going to elevate this game to another level. My goodness gracious, Willem Dafoe, Daisy Ridley, James McAvoy. And then the game came out and there was some some big moments in the narrative. But outside of that, yeah, the, the loop was clunky. The controls were even clunkier, especially if you were playing on a controller. My mm. goodness gracious me. Punch me in the face. Um, but yeah, it just, it just, I think it, it crumbled under its own sort of um, hype. It, yeah. it couldn't sort of uh, elevate to the level we were all expecting. And maybe that's a bit on us. Maybe that's a bit on games media and games fans for for putting it on this pedestal when no one had played a second of it. So it's true. It's, tough. it's true. It's disappointing, like, though. Yeah. I, I like originally, like, and I guess. Of the, for the the most majority of the time, I was just seeing it as an indie title that looked like a click, like a point and click adventure. It looked like it had some mystery to it, and it 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 had this you know that twelve you know twelve minute component to it that made it kind of like a little original, a little bit different. So that's all that that's all I cared about. It sounded like something really incredible, and I think when they mm. started introducing these like amazing actors these names to it then everyone was like oh shit this game is a big deal like you know and then i think that's maybe kind of like what you said like you know the hat got too big and it just you know didn't make up for it and it absolutely yeah. crushed the, only, it. the only people that can handle big hats is pharrell williams and uh he is not in this game so hence the, the struggle of 12 minutes james mcavoy's neck is not strong enough to support that hat yeah and like i said i I don't know when I said it, if it was a, like one of the many Hungry Gamers episodes, but it was just like, I also feel like the voice acting didn't change much to it either. Like, I don't think it necessarily brought much to the actual experience. So. Yeah, it added nothing more. Yeah. It was just like, the only thing was like, oh my God, that's Willem Dafoe saying these lines. He sounded kind like of Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> I still stand by that. He sounded like Christopher yeah. Lloyd. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame because, yeah, that, that game had some promise and it was okay. Like, it wasn't the worst thing I've played. No, it's not obviously the worst thing in the world. But for, for me, especially on this, like, you know, for the word of disappointment, like 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 a mum disappointed in her child, like, yeah. that's what 12 minutes was for me. Yeah, and, and, that, and everyone knows that growing up, when, when you hear your parents say they're disappointed in you, that cuts deeper than mm. just about anything they can say. It means I had a lot of faith in you. I, I honestly, truly hoped that you were going to, you know, be the best of what you could be and you just really let me down. Yeah. Hurts more to be let down than be pissed off or hurt mm. or upset. You know, disappointing people that matter. It's tough to come back from. And sadly, 12 minutes, no coming back from that. Especially when you hear about the story and what actually happened. It's like, oh, Ooh. yeah. I'm going to need a lot of therapy, both in and out of this game. But, um... Yeah, it's, it's been tough to sort of narrow down something specific as far as my biggest disappointment. Like, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, yeah, step step in step with you. With 12 minutes, it was a bit lackluster. I, I had higher hopes than probably deserved it to be, but you know, is what it is. But other than that, Battlefield 2042 is a dog's breakfast of a game. <laughs> uh, got a code thanks to EA but I don't know if I'm disappointed in EA for giving me a code now and, and making me play some of this game because it was uh, not a good time, Miss Hart. It no. was broken, very janky, very underwhelming, very soulless. There's not even a single-player campaign. They've just fully committed to the, the multiplayer experience, and that's fine. Multiplayer's got its place, but it was just hollow. Like I remember playing Battlefield 1 and, and experiencing these these stories and these characters from, from previous wars and and having some real heartfelt moments and now it's just soulless spawn in try kill some dudes oh now i'm dead oh now i'm getting teabagged and it's just like where's where's the heart in I this think... game and then the fact it was undercooked yeah like we've talked about this game should have maybe waited till the new year come out after christmas but they want to try and get that that christmas grab but i saw a statistic on the socials this oh, week, no. and the player base has dropped since launch 70%. 70% the player base has fallen off this game. And the game's only been out like a month. And 70% of the players that jumped in on that sort of week one, uh, they're out of here. So this game's in some trouble. 
Did you see the other statistic where it said there are more people playing Farming Simulator than Battlefield on PC yes. or Steam or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. Farming Simulator is great. <laughs> okay. So, you know, play it. Um, but yeah, the fact that they kind of like put that as kind of like a, you know, scale of like yeah. how many people are actually playing the game. I don't like. I never, like, with Battlefield, I never got, like, emotionally invested or followed any story or anything like that. Like, I, my favorite Battlefield, Battlefield 4, which is just me loading it up, multiplayer, just running, gunning, and, you know, jumping on machines and just having a blast. Um, and for the most part, it seems like that, like, that is the general idea of Battlefield 2042. But um, when I watch people play it on streams and such, it looks like people just load in and die instantly. So I'm wondering mm. if there was just something wrong with the whole concept on a scale level and it's just not working out to how they um, anticipated. Because it's not fun spawning and just dying instantly. Like, no one's having fun with that. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. And for it to come out in this trifecta of FPS juggernauts <laughs> with... Cod mm. Vanguard, which you know, still got a bit of discourse there in the responses. Uh, Halo Infinite Halo. multiplayer, yeah, and for then free. Battlefield, and and the fact that yeah, Halo's free. The other two are hundo dollar titles, and you can sort of see where the the love and the the fan base is sort of migrating to. Like, uh, I think the biggest thing is testament. Like, we've been playing a lot of Halo multiplayer this week with Buddy, who doesn't own an Xbox doesn't own an xbox controller but he's having that much fun with halo he's been playing like every night through pc on his playstation controller so you know this game is you know bridging gaps you know bringing fan bases together because it's just good fun unlike battle battlefield 2042 which sucks ass (laughs) and the other game i wanted to briefly mention and it's more so i'm disappointed on myself and maybe I guess the development team, but Aliens Fireteam Elite. I bought this at launch. I paid full price for this game, have not played one minute of it, oh. which hurts my soul because I love that world. Anyone that's listened to our podcast here or there knows that you and I are very passionate fans of, of these universes. Mm-hmm. And I've yet to play a minute, but luckily this month it's making its way to Game Pass. So finally oh, we can get a crew together okay. and we can rumble around, kill some Xenos. But I'm also now mad at myself because I paid like a hundred bucks for the premium edition and now you all are getting it included in Game Pass. Oh, so really? oh, well, yeah. I'm disappointed in, in myself there for not playing it, but also... From all the reports and the reviews, is the game is like a six out of ten. So yeah, it yeah. was very short lived um, yeah. from release. Actually, no, I think that one also had like a beta or something like that for people to test it out first, and people had a rough time or got kind of bored with it. So yeah, outside of Alien Isolation, game. yeah, <laughs> which yeah, Predator Hunting Grounds. I think it's on that tier. It's it's that caliber of see. Crap. Our, 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 our favorite franchise is just absolutely getting stomped on. Yes, that makes me sad. Makes but me um, sad other things that make us sad, in a broader broader lens... I got a lot of problems with... The gaming industry. Now, you're going to hear about it. <laughs> That's my favorite drop of this episode. Just the... We sort of had a, had a little rough... Rough script as far as the lines we wanted to weave in, and uh, Miss Miss Hart went method acting there and, and dropped the poop in, and it's just perfection, perfection. I got a lot of problems with the gaming industry. Now you're gonna hear about it. So obviously, yes, we are talking about our biggest grievances within, around, about the gaming industry as a whole. So uh, first, we'll look towards the Apit Nation for their responses. And the first one. Not everything needs to be an ongoing service. It is totally okay for a game to have an end. Mm. I could not agree more with this statement. Nothing out there has to be live and eternal and ongoing. I'm happy to get a a beginning, a middle and an end all wrapped up nicely with a bow on it and, you know, give me that story, give me that arc, give me those resolutions. Then I can move on to the next game. How do you make that money though? You got to make that cash. (sighs) Yeah. And that's that's where lies the problem, Miss Hart. That's rough. Death by a thousand cuts. Mm-hmm. That's how they get you. Mm-hmm. Those expansions and then the skins and the, 
the RNG from various loot boxes and things like that. They're just like, you know what? The game's going to come out free or at a lower price and we're just going to keep taking and taking and taking and taking until you got nothing left <laughs> but a heap of shitty skins. And I can attest to that because I am a sucker for this type of thing. Yep. <laughs> uh, the next one, releasing hot garbage instead of delaying. I guess well, that weaves in nicely to the Battlefield 2042 discussion oh. earlier. What else did you say, Sarah? I said I was cyberpunk. Talk- <laughs> cyberpunk, yeah. Yeah, but it's funny because we really enjoyed our yeah, time yeah, with like, Cyberpunk. I, I still stand by that I loved playing the game regardless of it being, like, broken, um, you know. But, yeah, it's, it's, like, I mean, take your time and release release a good game. Halo multiplayer or Halo so far has uh, proven the point of just keep on pushing back and, you know, release, release the good stuff. And I think I think the big thing that, that uh, these gaming companies could learn is just being transparent and open instead of trying to sweep things under the rug and just release it and hope it's going to generate enough sales to be fine. For the most part, the people with common sense, when a studio comes out and says, we need more time, we're going to push this back a few weeks, a few months, whatever it is. Yeah, there's some people out there that are just dicks and will carry on. Mm. But for the most part, like, that's cool, man. Bring it out when it's ready. And then we get this full experience and we're happy. Otherwise, you get situations like Cyberpunk or 2042 or insert other game title here because it happens far too often. Hey, and then you have some perfect coincidences of the previous year where Animal Crossing got delayed and I was so crushed. And then it turned out it got delayed for the most perfect time because everyone was getting locked up in COVID. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Just keep your keep your complaining to a minimum. Just complain at Festivus time, and the rest of the time just uh just just mind your beeswax. Next one: the cost of gaming in Australia. Don't even get me started on collectors editions. Can confirm. Obviously, uh, when you do the the US to the AU conversions, we are typically paying another twenty, sometimes thirty percent on the base game mm. on top because of in air quotes taxes and inflations and whatever bullshit the Australian government want to throw on top comparative to the rest of the world and it sucks and then the collector's editions we're paying two three four five hundred bucks depending on how crazy and intricate these things are and it is expensive it is rough my steam i think is still set to australian store um so there'll be times where i'll be like ah, i don't want to get that game and then my husband will be like hang on then he'll check his phone he goes no nah, it's only this person is an american i'm like oh, okay we'll get it then <laughs> And and the way you work that, he'll just buy it and then gift it to you? Yeah. Is that the way you do it? Yeah. Hmm. Hacks. I can appreciate that. That's smart, though, because, yeah, we, we just cop these extra taxes and bullshit sort of box-moving fees on top. It's like And it sucks. Some of the prices like we, that we hear over here, especially, like, the, the market over here is kind of competitive within the store level. Like, granted, I remember from way back in the day when, like, working at JB Hi-Fi and we were always trying to get pretty competitive on new release game titles where we would be bouncing back between Big W and that and trying to have the lowest price to, you know, obviously get people in the, in the door. But it's, it's not always that consistent. Some titles just come out at the $100 mark. Mm. Well, a lot of them now at base, like in some of the stores, they're 110, 120 bucks for, for next gen nope. titles. And nope. it is, that's a lot of cabbage to that's be thrown a, around. That's almost a console. Like <laughs> <laughs> That's that's an Xbox mini fridge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God, don't get me started about that. I didn't even put that in the grievances. Now I'm sad because I'm still remembering that I don't have one. Good time to let out that emotion. <sighs> All right, the next one. That again, OCE has lost spots within international tournaments due to the lack of organization from hosts and teams. Majority of our region tournaments to qualify are either in Southeast Asia or North America, meaning 120 to 300 millisecond ping to qualify and then the inability to be able to showcase what these players can do on a level playing field. That's a so really can good confirm, point. Like, um, yeah, a, a lot of our fantastic pro players here in the au are constantly getting hard done by not only due to time zone scheduling when there is scrimmages and trying to play in these damn tourneys but our network being so shitty and then also the fact we don't have a lot of local tourneys here for them to work their way to get spots into these global tournaments so i feel you there Elsie. i feel you there yeah the australian internet is pretty fucking worthless so even like trying to establish like you know 
tournaments within Australia must be rough. And then also being a player, you know, even being able to, you know, qualify, working with the, working with good internet at home or wherever you are based, like even that's a struggle. So, mm. yeah, that's a very good point. I'm glad that um, Aussie Techs brought that up. Yeah, yeah. Ho- hopefully that starts to change. Like there is some good positive shift here in the AU and some of our bigger bigger teams and more successful teams are getting a lot more attention on the world stage. Like Pentanet got a lot of love in that lull tourney. Remember when they were just like the, the bell of the ball and the, the social media uh, momentum that came off the back of those guys having successes was great. And mm. we're seeing some things with Chiefs recently in a couple of tourneys. And yeah, hopefully it's onwards and upwards and, and they can reinvest locally here and, and make, make it more uh, consistent for for these teams because a lot of time and money goes into trying to get these guys and girls into the tournaments and then also when they've got to travel and everything else it's it's tough it's very tough so uh yeah hopefully 2022 will bring some change there some other change that is needed is is on the back of this next one crunch why is this still a thing could not agree more yeah we have been seeing a bit of a shift where some of these studios have come out and sort of said, we're moving to permanent four-day work weeks, but we're not sacrificing salary, still we're getting all the benefits, so on and so forth. So hopefully things like that become more of a, a consistent common offering. As well as um, due to obviously COVID and everything, um, a lot of studios now are finding that they can have like certain roles where people can work remotely and work from home. So then obviously people being able to balance like family life and being there for family members a bit more. For sure. And and just anyone that is like, I, I know this episode is very soapboxy, but like when you are working from home, be, be mindful to have that hard start and end time. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a really, really bad person. I know I'm saying be mindful of it where I don't do it very much myself. Like, you know, I'll, I'll roll out of bed at seven and I'll start working from then and then I'll work through till seven. And, and then, you know, over nighttime, if I'm doing not much, I'll chuck a movie or anime on the background and I'll still fluff around with work. So be mindful and have that routine where whether you're putting a work shirt on, even if you are working from home all day, have that sort of mental reconnect, disconnect where at five o'clock the shirt comes off and you put your casuals on and you can start unwinding and, and breaking away from that work cycle because yeah. it's it's vicious and you ain't getting paid for the extra hours. No, definitely not. Yeah, so so be smart, value your time because uh, it's, it's something I'm still learning to to get good at. Uh, the next one, toxic culture against female employees. Could not agree more yep. there, Grox. It is a cesspool out there in the gaming space, in every space. Like you see it all over the world and yep. it just sucks. It Frat sucks. boy culture, old boy mentality, all this kind of boys club bullshit. Throw it all in the bin with your copy of Battlefield 2042 and move on. Yep. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> The next one, full price games, but with content locked behind a microtransaction paywall, nothing like laying down my cold hard cash, only if you agree to buy predatory microtransactions. Mm. Yeah, yeah. When, when you're dropping that big cheddar, you know, when we're talking that hundo, 110, 120, whatever, whatever value the game is, you expect when you pay the price for this game and it's listed as a full release, it's not a beta it's nothing like that. It's it's not a technical alpha that you're paying to get early access to. When you're paying money for a full release title, you should be getting the full experience. Agreed. But also, yeah, microtransactions, please leave me alone. I'm, <laughs> I'm a weak-willed human being. Uh, the next one, releasing too many unfinished games just to please shareholders mm-hmm. and then jumping on the back of that. All of it, the entire industry... <laughs> Yeah, Morgan Phoenix, all of it. The industry sucks. Chuck them all in the in the in the in bucket the of badness. Uh, Next gen console availability yep. is another grievance, but obviously we, we've talked about that here and there. Those component shortages are going to make this maybe another talking point for Festivus twenty twenty two. That's still probably going to be up there. Yeah, which is sad to think of. Uh, the next one, Miss Hart. This one might hit close to home for you. Bungie's lack of speed when it comes to Vault of Glass jacket deliveries. So we're talking the physical jackets for the people that did the raid. Nas has done very raid. particular here. Yeah. <laughs> and then he also says, in caps, fuck Blizzard. Mm. So pretty self-explanatory, that piece. Yeah, I have heard that Bungie is really on the slow of um, essentially 
fulfilling orders. I've seen a lot of people who are actually waiting for uh, one of the books that they announced where digital holders are not only getting it faster, but some of them actually got it for free, where people who bought the physical copies are still waiting months to get their actual Oh, those physical grimoires book. that they've uh, been dropping? Yeah, exactly. So. Mm. I do have my Destiny cookbook here, though. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's a thing. The ramen. Completely irrelevant, but I have a Destiny cookbook. Go me. Horn is away from my toot. Uh, the next one. Games due to be released only to have them pushed back and losing interest as discussed on The Hungry Gamers. So Mama Loz in there. You know, she gets her she gets her gaming infotainment from us on the reg. So thank you, Mama Loz. And we feel you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, if, if they're going to outline reasons why, keep us in the loop. You know, communication is key in anything. You know, work, life, love. Just, just, just communicate. Bad news is bad, but it's less bad when you hear about it ahead of time instead of, oh, by the way, this is meant to happen today. It's not now. My bad. See ya. Yeah, but it's also like that whole thing where they like announce things way too early. Um, I think yeah. Deathloop is probably my best example of that. I was all about Deathloop like when they first announced it. And obviously, like, you know, pushbacks happen, issues happen, COVID happened, all that sort of stuff. But then like it just kind of, I think Deathloop came out and I didn't know. Like, it finally actually got released and I hadn't noticed. So, or mm. I forgot and I haven't played it and I kind of have no interest in playing it now, which I think mm. just if you look at from from the announcement trailer and maybe the few first trailers that we saw where I was all like, yeah, this game looks great. I can't wait to play it to now be, be like me being like, oh, it came out. Oh, uh, I'll play it some other time. You know, you know what'll help get that interest back up in this game, Miss Hart, is if you scroll a couple episodes back through the the Hungry Gamers RSS feed and give our oh. spoiler cast a listen oh, for Death Loop. Okay. That might get you keen to play it because some spicy takes in there, and uh, I really enjoyed the game. Thank you very much. Okay then, Miss Hart, what is your grievance, issue, disappointment, pain within the gaming industry? <sighs> One thing that really got highlighted this year, like this year especially, um, is companies that have like really bad behaviors and then just they hope that it will just blow over and like people will forget about it and there's no action, there's no accountability and they just kind of hope that, you know, everyone will forget about it and they'll be happy, there'll be no more, you know boycotting and there'll be no you know poo-pooing like the examples are obviously Activision Blizzard but they're still kind of getting probed about you know their shitty behaviors um another one's Ubisoft Ubisoft is still having issues where they still have people who have harassed or done some kind of bad behaviors um a lot of the stories that are coming out is that Ubisoft is uh, not getting rid of them just moving them elsewhere just moving them around as opposed to actually punishing them for bad behaviors. And um, Riot, I don't like Riot is, I believe still being investigated like currently um, about their behaviors um, in regards to uh, like, you know, mistreatment of uh, female staff or staff of like um, different genders and just no equality and all that sort of business. Like I believe they're still being investigated about it today. Um, so I th- don't know if a lot of people knew about that or remember that, but that is still kind of really something that's happening. But that goes to show that like, you know, when we first hear about it, we all get angry about it and we obviously all want change. But then if it's not, if it's not in our peripheral, we kind of forget about it and then they're happy because we've forgotten about it and then you know you can release some amazing thing that everyone can just enjoy and be like this is great and forget about the bad stuff we need to like maybe the term stay angry is probably not right but it needs to stay in our you know in our peripheral we need to keep this in the back of our mind that yeah this shit's going on it's it's all well and good to rise up and share stuff on social media and show that you you're standing with the staff but it needs to be a continued effort because exactly. yeah the the powers that be at the top just seem to yeah they're like we'll just move them over there or we'll step out of the spotlight for just a little while just just you know it's it's the it's Jurassic Park's like that nobody can you know can't see us if we don't move exactly you know? so they stand still <laughs> the anger T-Rex walks past and they're like all right sweet let's go about our day again let's let's go accost more staff and cause more drama and my grievance with this industry is just, uh, yeah, the sheer amount of just genuine bad and shit people 
and organizations that exist within this space. Like it's a, it's a passion, it's a hobby, it's a love that we and our listeners and, and, you know, other people out there in the world hold very, very dearly. Like gaming is a, is a sacred pastime and it's a very special pastime. And, you know, it's gotten people through so many big, big things in their life. And to know that a lot of it is indirectly gate kept or controlled at the top by a bunch of scum is very disheartening. So hopefully you do start to see some genuine change. And I still hold out hope that old mate Bobby Kotick will eventually go off into the sunset. No doubt it's going to work for him when he does go, but you know, that will hopefully be the the biggest shot fired, which will start to disrupt this space a bit more and yeah, make some change for the good because it's it's very bittersweet playing these games, but having these traumas attached to them that the staff has gone through day in and day out to make these games that yeah. we love so it's it sucks so just be better industry be better. be better like there's some great people out there don't get me wrong and there's studios that do it right and don't have any of this type of nonsense but it's just them old fossilized power players at the top that need to go mm. be the change the that you want to see the better yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going to move into a bit more of a positive question here. I got a lot of problems with... Things being so bad, it was actually good. It's a Festivus miracle. But yeah, we are talking about things that we've experienced in 2021 that could be seen as bad, but they're actually good. So it could be like a guilty pleasure. It could be a game or a movie or a piece of food that sounds horrible or people are against and you went you know what i watched this or i ate this and went holy guacamole this is this is what i needed Mm. so uh the first one uh, werewolf the apocalypse uh that game i have not touched it but i was interested and intrigued when it was announced and and it came out uh, i think in q2 of this year and i've heard it was a mess uh but huzo huzo got a bit of bit of enjoyment out of it (laughs) even though it was not very positively received. Uh, the next one, Back for Blood, Miss Hart. Was it uh, bad? Not bad, bad, <laughs> but not bad? overly deep either is the response here. Like, okay. Same super fun with friends, but like outside of the core loop of get from point A to point B and shoot a million enemies, True. there's not much to it. And, and I get that. You know what? You're right because <laughs> not overly deep because I think I even uttered the line, I have no idea what the story is, but I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, there's bad stuff around, Miss Hart. I got there's things to shoot. Infected share. humanoid creatures, and you got a lot of guns and a lot of a lot of viscera to be uh, spreading around these worlds. That's right. Back for blood. It is good. I, I wouldn't classify it as bad, bad uh, either. But um, yeah, it was wasn't too deep, but it was fun, and I'm hoping that's what we get with Aliens Fire Team Elite. I think we're going to get a similar type of experience. There's a story. Probably Whale and Yutani are being a bunch of dicks as they always are, but you're just going to kill a lot of xenomorphs on the way to uh, get to the end, just like you do with Back for Blood. So the next thing that was experienced that was so bad it was good. This one made me pause for a second because Squid Game got a reference here. So Miss Hart's Squid Game. What do you think? If they if um, they listen to it with the English dub, I agree. That was that was bad. That was <laughs> yeah. bad. Yeah, true. That was bad. Um, so I could I could agree on that level, but for the most part, it was it was all right. It was a good it was a good series. There was a lot of good talking points, and there was a lot of creativity. Um, the art direction and all the other little choices in the background I felt were really good. But yeah, if you yeah. if you if you had to hear it in English, it was rough. Yeah, I watched the first episode on a dubby and yeah it was not a good time i I pivoted across to the sub after that and had a much 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 better viewing experience of squid game but i get it if if it was the the dub from front to back yeah it was bad but it was good so uh yeah that's that's approved here that's eight bit approved as far as bad but good the next one this one hits close time for me malignant so that's the uh the james wan horror movie that came out this year what a terribly great movie is the the sort of descriptor there attached to it. And, and I agree, it was, it was fucking madness, this film. And there were some moments where I'm like, this is a train wreck, but I can't look away and I love it. So that, that 
answer there, I think, typifies this this category or this question perfectly. Have you watched it yet? No. no. I've I've seen enough people saying it was weird and crappy to stay away from it. Speaking of Miss Hart, this is completely unrelated and hasn't been thrown in the dock. Have you watched Hawkeye yet? No, no, not yet. I'm nervous. I'm really fucking nervous. <laughs> oh, I'm really, I wanted to really know if that nervous. might have fallen into this this bucket or if it's just good, good for you. No, I'm just nervous. I don't want to hate Third it. Third episode's really good. I really enjoyed it. Watched this week. It got a lower good score fun. on IGN than the first episode. Man. IGN, IG Schmen. Okay. <laughs> Like my opinion means anything, but yeah, anyway. Next one. Cherry flavoured gin. So bad it was good. I don't like cherry. Yeah, I'm not a big cherry guy myself, but love me some gin and I love me some flavoured gin. I don't think I drink flavoured gin. I'm intrigued. Do you like pink gin? I think I've had it. Mm, I'm a fan. Big fan of pink gin. Mm, But cherry flavoured, I'd probably be a bit like, "Mm." and maybe if it's mixed with something, I don't know if you would, but maybe if it's mixed with something, I maybe. But I always associate cherry flavour with um, kids Panadol. Yeah, good. Good comp. Or I think I I have a weird attachment too with cherry to like Dr. Pepper in a way. Oh, right. Yeah. I hate Dr. Pepper. I had it once and never tried it again. Dr. Pooper is what they should rebrand it to. Next one, the pizza double from KFC. So, so bad, but also amazing. Paid for it later, though. <laughs> emoji of the peach and then a wave of water emoji. So I think we can imply that uh, they got a little bit of the KFC runs after <laughs> the pizza double. I did not try the pizza double. What's a pizza double? So it was two fillets of kfc like oh, the fillets no. from the burgers yeah. and then between that it had cheese uh like a marinara pizza sauce and i think pepperoni as well that's a lot of salt <laughs> it is a lot of salt and and i would have been in the cubicle beside uh well, you know crack wing my my anus off but uh i, I want to give it a try take a photo of it too because like it's like like it is a lot of salt like it's definitely a lot of salt, but I mean chicken, cheese, some like you know tomato based sauce, some marinara, and it, the pepperoni maybe a bit much, but it doesn't sound terrible. Like it doesn't sound like the no. wackiest of combos. Hmm. Speaking of wacky combos, Miss Hart, have you seen on the socials here in the AU what what Pizza Hut are doing from this week? No, I don't think I have. They're making a pizza, but instead of the traditional pizza base, it's a chicken schnitzel as the base. Oh, hot diggity dog! Sign me up. So I guess it's like a, a giant pizza um, palmy. Yeah, essentially, almost. yeah. I want to give it a try. I think I'll be uh, using the peach and the wave emojis afterwards, <laughs> but uh, I want to give it a try. Uh, the next one. And this one, it's it's a little bit uh, different tonally from, from some of the previous answers here, but this is from our friend Nobu. And he sort of said, the passing of my dad in September, which was the same time I launched my t-shirt store, so I had both at the same time. I never had the chance to surprise him with the news too. So bad news immediately combined with the good news and the excitement of the new store. So Nobu, our our yeah. sincerest apologies and sending all the love regarding the passing of your old man. I know how that can be and it's not a good time, but it's exciting to know off the back of that uh, lo-fi fox apparel has been born. So... Uh, peek that, chuck that in your web browsers. Uh, it's primarily ran through Etsy. So if you go L-O-F-I Fox Apparel, you'll be able to find that there. There is a ton of merchandise available. So if you're looking for some new tees and hoodies and, and other sort of miscellaneous items, check out Lo-Fi Fox Apparel. They've got some pretty cool stuff there. And Nobu, mate, hope you're doing well. Mm. Uh, the next one, as far as so bad it was good, GTA Trilogy gets another bit of uh, love and mention here horrible as far as the game itself but was loving the memes and highlights that came off the back of it i agree uh, yeah i'm i'm with that i'm with that uh the next response here i wanted to say the wwe but no that's just been terrible (laughs) (laughs) yeah the wwe Sucks yeah, these days, Miss Hart. It's rough. If and if I only hear anything about WWE, it's about them just dropping contracts or mistreating, um, you know, their athletes. So yeah, 
or the talent. Yeah. So, yeah. The sooner good. Vince McMahon dies, the better. <laughs> all right. Yep. In all honesty, like, you know, you don't, you don't joke around with death, but that is the only way the WWE is going to get better because he is going to be in control of that company until he breathes his last breath. I mean, like, he could the be sole person in control. There's definitely a lot of other fingers in that pie. Nah, he's he's sort of stripped back so many um, authority levels and so many roles. Like Triple H used to handle NXT, yeah, and NXT was doing great. They've taken all the power away from Triple H now, and uh, Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard are running NXT as well as Raw and SmackDown. So they've got final deciding factors on the storylines, on the, the the voice work and the promos. Oh, who's in? Who's out? Who's getting the push? And hence, you see, I think they've released over a hundred uh wwe superstars this year alone like it's insane so yeah vince retire enjoy the final probably decade of your life before you do probably not go peacefully into the night but yeah just uh let let triple h and, and stephanie take over and try and build this brand back up again because it sucks yeah, your boy jeff hardy's still in running around though oh is he back is he yeah, but he's they've fully let him just lean into, you know, the the crazy face paint and all that. I think they're going to maybe let him play as uh, the, the character Willow that he used to do before the WWE yeah. and he used in TNA a little bit. Yeah. I think they're going to sort of shift him into Willow again soon, which is going to be even weirder. Yeah. <sighs> the Hardy Boys with a Z. Okay, the next one. Pokemon Unite's launch was probably the worst thing anyone could experience unless we talk about GTA Trilogy Remastered. <laughs> GTA's getting that Stab, love. stab, stab. Yeah, that was a game I was excited for and played for about two weeks. Haven't thought about it since. Yeah. And I feel fine about that. Absolutely fizzled. Mm, It's just Pokemons. We're we're going to get another dozen games in the next handful of years. Yeah, they ain't crying. They ain't crying. It is eternal, Miss Hart. And the next one. I had to think about this for a second. This one comes by way of Mama Loz. I love you, Mama. But this, uh, you know, rewatching Shaun of the Dead after listening to Comedy Rewind. Cheap plug there for Australia's John Peck. That's the epitome of so bad, it's good. Love that movie. Thanks for the trip down memory lane. So, Mama Wait. Loz is saying that Shaun of the Dead's a bad movie? It, no. <laughs> right? It's not. Yeah, I, I disagree. Like, I love you, Mama. And a lot of the things you've shown me has helped shape what I enjoy. But I think this is genuinely a good movie. Yeah, like, it's uh, Edgar Edgar Wright's, like, f- first staple where it launched him into, you know, director stardom, essentially. Yeah. But um, maybe, maybe like, uh, like, maybe it's still, like, a little bit rough on the edges, maybe. Yeah, like, there's parts of it that hadn't, hadn't aged too, like, too, I don't know, aged too well, <laughs> I guess is the yeah. wording I could use. But I thought it was still pretty good. Well, she says she loves the movie, so... Yeah. That's the main part. Yeah, and we love you, Mama Loz. And, and uh, yeah, we're going to jump into our responses. Miss Hart, what is something that you've experienced in 2021 that was so bad, it was so good? Crime scene kitchen. I'm... Yes. <laughs> that was, like, something I stumbled upon, and I'm like, this is so fucking stupid. A cooking show and then a crime show and then putting it together. Like, that's so stupid, and it was the best. It was... <laughs> It was the best. And thanks to, like, Joel McHale for actually, you know, being the essential glue, keeping that show together and watchable. Like, it was great. He and carried then, like, that show. He carried that show very heavily. Um, it's still very rough, but for the most part, it was actually quite enjoyable. So, Crime Scene Kitchen. I, I want to put a rubber stamp of approval on that response, too, because that show was brilliant. Like, I loved it, but, yeah, it was bad, but it was also... Uh, anchored by Joel McHale because old Curtis Stone, you know, Australian royalty, Australian super chef. I think he's so hot. Yeah, people, you think he's hot no, or they, they do? do? Like everything oh. he appears on, they're like, and then there's him. And then they always cut to the like, you know, a contestant being like, oh my God, so attractive. Maybe yeah. because I'm Australian. I think Australian Joel McHale's more like... handsome than Curtis Stone. <laughs> huh? I think Joel McHale's more handsome than Curtis Stone. I, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have much skin in the game as far as yeah, Curtis Stone and his uh, track. Like he's a good looking dude. I'm like, not going to yeah, fault he's a him nice on look, that. Like he's a good looking dude, but like in comparison to what? Like I don't know. Yeah, he's oh, he's on a podium beside Twelve Minutes. That's the problem. He's up there. 
high on those podiums and then then people see it and experience it in real life and like really <laughs> but I, I guess he's a good chef and especially for american audiences he's a foreign flavor so oh you know what that you, makes you get sense. the hot points already like yeah. same as if we've got american people on aussie tv or or other nationalities on aussie tv they've got that they've got that intrigue they've got that foreign flavor oh, foreign spice but yeah crime scenes kitchen check it out it's so freaking good i loved it yeah it's a good Can't spin on the cooking two. show yeah my uh my experience miss heart this is only a recent one for me so it's fresh in my memory mm. i've uh started playing genshin impact the last couple of weeks so that is a free-to-play game uh anime oriented fantasy rpg but it's got a heavy emphasis on gacha games so we're, we're talking sort of the uh, japanese pseudo gambling where you're getting random money put in to try and get great prizes it's going to come out the other end and, and that comes by a way of better weapons for your your team of four or potentially new characters yeah. to bring into your anime squad i am hooked and i feel very dirty <laughs> it's a gorgeous game uh, it, it's funny i was talking to nato about this the other day and he said it's it's pretty much breath of the wild and i said no it's not because breath of the wild sucks where this game's great but like I get it to a degree where it's, it's open world, it's vibrant. Sucks. I don't think well, I don't think it sucks, but like I don't think it's as good as everyone says. Better watch out that he's for the next grievance. <laughs> yeah. Watch what you come say, sir. Me. Come at me, world. <laughs> everyone knows that uh yeah, Breath of the Wild is uh not my favorite game. I just I just can't mesh with this universe, but I'm meshing with Genshin Impact. And this is a game this you pay nothing you've to play. You've gone down the Wii route. Like, you're just absolutely... I, I am full Wii route. Like, it is ridiculous, Miss Hart. It is getting out of control. But the one thing with this game that took me by surprise is the entire thing is voice acted. Like, every character you meet is English voice acted. And for a free-to-play game that came out out of nowhere, at least in my peripherals, it's very impressive uh, when they've got that type of detail and care into it where they've got every character you meet main ancillary throwaway they've all got voice work attached to it and i'm like god damn okay okay <laughs> and you know who doesn't want to have a squad of four people and a few of them are, are crazy cute anime girls and we just run around solving crimes fighting beasts living our best life gambling throwing <laughs> some money away here or there it's it's it's, it's a good you. time <laughs> But yeah, it's it's so bad it's good because I'm really enjoying it, even though it is a bit predatory. And yeah, I, I can't get enough. Yeah. It's it's been a good uh, little distractor this week, Miss Hart, <laughs> or the last few weeks. But uh, well, let's let's jump is. into another one. At the Festivus dinner, you gather your eight bit or the Hungry Gamers, and tell them all the ways they have disappointed you over the past year. <laughs> So we are talking about uh, all the ways the Hungry Gamers and or 8-Bit have disappointed the 8-Bit Nation or ourselves over the last 24 months. Uh, not 24 months, 12 months. We don't want to go back two Feels years. Feels like it, know? but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, Long that's year. It's a bit too harsh. So we'll start with, with grievances from the nation. And the first one, I don't know if this is directed wholly and solely at myself. I really or hope both this of us. Is you. But too much facial hair is one of the grievances that have been thrown away, Miss Hart. I try so to sorry. keep it in what I try. I'm gonna buy you one of those Epi Lady hair removal things for Christmas. That'll mm. that'll sort you out. Just do like those like full face wax that you see now on Instagram where the men are getting like their full face waxed off. So I'll do that. Oh. Oh, I, I reckon I'd cry. It, it, it'd would. be it so stings. painful. It fucking stings. Waxing it. Yeah, it would not feel good. Uh, we've had a few people saying they've got no grievances, they've got no beef with us, so thank oh. you, kind okay. members of the nation. Uh, the next one, Miss Hart, still no SVU podcast. Oh, you want that? Like, I know, <laughs> I know I've joked. <laughs> maybe. Maybe maybe people are hungry for some for some Benson mm. and or Stabler discussion. Eight bits uh, SVU podcast. These are yeah. their stories. Mm. Mm. I would not be upset. We we could we could workshop this over mm, our Christmas break. Who knows? Could... Who knows what new content will be announced in January? True. <sighs> Spoilers. Don't know. Is it? Is it not? The next one. <laughs> I would love to see some video style podcasts that can engage the audience more. Mm. 
Obviously, keep pumping it out on Kofi, but similar to a Joe Rogan experience that there is the option to watch the interview slash podcast. That's noted. I know we've um we've we've talked about it here and there hmm. regarding doing some some video based podcasts, and then it's still something we want to try and try and workshop and put together. Yeah. So hopefully, we can get some stuff. Maybe that's going to fall into future plans. But yeah, I know we didn't do any this year, which. It's tough. It's 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 tough to do. And obviously we want to do the best that we can for you guys. So we don't want to half ass it. So please understand that we always we want to do right by you guys, but we also want to do it well. We don't want to half ass exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, and and that that's a big thing for us. Yeah, it's it's you're either all in or you're all out, I think. Yeah, you don't want to don't want to just uh you don't want the C+. Plus. No. You want to try and get that A+. Plus. So uh, you want the high distinctions here at 8-Bit and the Hungry Gamers. Do we always get them? No, no. but we, we aim and strive for them. <laughs> uh, the next one sort of follows directly in off the back of that. So more FaceTime. So talking streams, video, and socials. So yeah, it's true. Why do you want to see our faces? Have, yeah. Haven't you heard? We've got too much facial hair. <laughs> yeah, we're too hairy. <laughs> We're too hair. Maybe we just got to do it with filters. We'll just oh, get yeah. some filters on to hide the hair. Yeah. Oh, that weird. Oh, we could use one. that filter that I saw Alana using the other day, like the the gender swap one. Maybe oh, we'll do a podcast yeah. where you can be male Brenda Alan, and I'll be Al. female Brenda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Brenda and Alan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down to do a gender bend podcast once. That could be fun. <laughs> be oh, we'd have to voice it too wouldn't we? we we've got to go all in i mean i obviously have no problem doing a male voice you on the other <laughs> doing a female voice hello 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 oh Welcome look forward to, to that listeners <laughs> that's what you can look forward to an God, hour and 20 minutes of that an hour yeah <laughs> this will be workshopped in our very extensive christmas debriefing listeners so who knows Workshop. Brenda and Alan might be coming your way in the so near old. future. <laughs> uh, the next one, perhaps more guest stars on the show. That's true. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. We've been we've been fairly hands off this year as far as bringing in outside, uh, yeah. oh, not outsiders, you know, other people into the mix. Yeah, it's just un- like unfortunately with me being over here, uh, we have very weird kind of time frames between which we can record. So understanding that when we try to bring people on, we are burdening them with like a yeah, you can totally come on, but these are our times, unfortunately. So, but we're gonna try and you know get better at that in the new year. Yeah, we'll try work that, and also like sort of a little bit behind the curtain. We have had feedback here or there uh, from some people where they haven't always been happy with other uh, guests yeah. on the show because it changes the flavor of the episode a little bit, or the flow, or the dynamic isn't the same. So it's it's a juggling act, I think. So just trying to work out who fits and how is always a tough part, and then also they might fit, but. Will the episode come out the way we want it to, or will the listeners be happy with it too? So it's a lot of expectation management. So it's it's not that we haven't thought about it. It's just maybe we think about it a bit too much at the same time because we want to make that A plus content. You know, if we're talking about going back to those grading marks yep. again, we want to have high end content week after week. Yeah, we don't want a half ass. We want a full ass. <laughs> exactly. We want all that ass. All we want ass. that peach. Just no wave emojis after that peach, please. Okay, so we're going to jump into a soundbite here from Australia's John O'Peck. So let's see what his grievance is or are. What's going on, guys? It is John O'Peck here, host of Comedy Rewind. Happy Festivus. It is time for me to air my grievances with Brendan and Ali. And you may have heard my name come up recently on The Hungry Gamers in a short discussion about the way that I pronounce the abbreviation of graphics interchange format gif or gif as its creator named it back in 1987 so for reasons that you know don't really make sense to me the internet's decided to rename it the gif and i accept that you know english is fluid and literally doesn't mean literally anymore ironic just means coincidental so you know the meanings of words change pronunciation doesn't really change but in this case it has but for me i've always been happy to go against the grain stand up for what's right in my eyes so for me it's gif and next time 
you're on Comedy Rewind. Maybe we can discuss why I think it's grammatically correct if you're interested in my perspective as a writer, as a grammar Nazi. But I'm not here to convince you that I'm right, that you're wrong. That's not what this is about. I'm here because you called me out, Brendan, and I listen to The Hungry Gamers every week, which means I listen to you butchering the English language every week. Now, the latest victim, just the other day, it was the Weta Workshop. Now, you said Weta multiple times. It's not a breakfast cereal. You know, it's it's not Uncle Toby's Weta Bix. It's Weta. And Ali, you're not innocent in this either. You were in on the fun. But I hear both of you guys almost every week throwing around Mealy, Melly, Mele. I don't know, but it's Mele. It's a French word, but we've adopted it. You know, it's not this nebulous word, like no one really knows how to pronounce it. Well, they do. It's melee. You hear it in sports like every week. But um, no, I'm not going to change your mind. That's not what I want to do. I'm just here to say glass houses, rocks. Don't be throwing them. Don't be hating. Much love. <sighs> he listens every week and he doesn't hear the times where we praise him and say that he is a bajillion times smarter than both of us together. <laughs> Uh, I, I think he that. does. I think he does because because he he came came around my place a couple of weeks ago, and his head certainly looks bigger than it was the last time I saw him. So he's he's taking all this power and all this praise, and it's just getting stored in all that copious amount of grey matter that he already has, and it's just becoming bigger and bigger. <laughs> I reckon by you know Festivus twenty twenty three, we're gonna start seeing the the sort of onset of mars attacks in john opec as far as the head shape there yeah yeah um don't get me started on the pronunciation of gaka but uh yeah gif gif i still stand by stand by gif until i die you're you're a you're a gif soldier too aren't you miss hart yeah i grew up on the internet yep so i'm i'm right there with you and steve wilhite who actually uh created uh as part of a, a group at CompuServe this this format uh, yes, he does say GIF because it's meant to be like the peanut butter butter brand, but that's GIF with a J is how they spell it. But I'm a, I'm a GIF man, hard G, not a soft G, until I die. I'm gonna die on that hill. But yeah, I know, I know I did when he was when he was uh, bringing up weather. I know when we were doing that uh, that sort of news read a couple of weeks ago regarding the acquisition of of Weta being sold off for 1.6 billion. I think it was. I know when I was saying it in my head, I was wrong, but I was in too deep to circle back. So I'm like, I just got to lean into this. I had no foot to correct you. And just keep saying, Weeder. No clue. <laughs> and I felt horrible, but I'm like, I hope no one calls me out on this. Hope no one takes away my I hope we don't have a grievance episode card. anytime soon where someone could actually call me out. <laughs> oh, yeah. M- maybe Jono's stockpiling those ones for you for next year. Yeah, I can. Who knows? I'm not saying anything because he sent me a message about this episode. And now I'm going to watch whatever I say. <laughs> no, I won't. I will still keep butchering the English language because, yes, I do it because I'm a bumpkin white trash kid from the country who uh, has a lot of slang in my vocabulary. And, uh, you know, that's me. And I can't I'm from change. the Western I'm, I'm suburbs. Too, I'm, from, I'm from the snowy mountains, you dogs, yeah. you know? So, uh, yeah, I will keep talking the way I talk. And you can love it or you can leave it. You know, that's that's on those Aussie stickers, isn't it? Is yeah, that the one? love it or leave it. Yeah. But uh, don't leave the Hungry Gamers podcast listener circle because we need you and we love you and we're very appreciative of that. And thank you, Jono, for that fantastic drop. Uh, nailed it as always. And, and yeah, we are, we're your biggest fans, even if you do say gif wrong. <laughs> All right. So moving on to the next one. Love the podcast, but not a big fan of the Hungry Game Show. Oh, I am livid right now. I feel very attacked. I feel very seen and very vulnerable. And I get it. I know it's different. It's not news. It's still some infotainment. But you know what? It's more content for your ear holes. And it costs you nothing. And the amount of fucking hours I put into making these episodes, you damn well better love The Hungry Game Show because it is an endeavor of love for the listeners and I enjoy doing it. I know I haven't released one of these episodes in a couple of months, but there will be one out before Christmas. So get excited, except for this fan that said they're not a big fan of it. 
But uh, yeah, you've got another Hunger Games episode coming at you, so you better listen to it. <laughs> You're allowed to not be a fan of something. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. As I said, we're it's very, very much heavily laced in satire this episode, <laughs> you know. We're sarcastic and we're having fun. And yeah, you, you can be fine that you don't like it. Criticism, good, bad, or otherwise, for anything we do is always welcomed. So message us on them socials. Email us if you've got a nice long form response and breakdown on what you do or don't like hello at apit.net because yeah we want to know what you do and don't like because that way we can retool and refocus and realign our energies just to keep making the stuff you all love yeah but this one person that doesn't like the hunger game show i'm fucking watching you mate <sighs> i'm watching you uh the next one still waiting for those podcast live streams yeah well like we said try to we try we try we try to do most things here sometimes they're not very successful but we're going to reevaluate and try and get this going when we've got the time and the bandwidth yeah. i'm still so worked up about the hungry games yeah, i'm very really very protective of my podcast children and it feels like they just said my my beautiful podcast child is ugly so when you uh, email us about anything that you do or do not like, uh, we'll make sure dad doesn't check the emails. Mum will check the emails and listen to you, okay? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, dad's going to get mad, that's apparently. <laughs> nah, I, I, I can appreciate it. And, and yeah, in all honesty, yeah, please, please feedback, good, bad or otherwise, because it's going to keep us going. You know, it's going to keep us improving. It's going to keep Brenna uh, going. We'll talk perfect. about it for the rest of the episode. <laughs> I'm wound up and I've only had one coffee today. Imagine if I had two. All right, the next one, in a much more positive light. Oh. Uh, this grievance about the Hungry Amers and or 8-Bit, that you're far too good looking and kind and wonderful and that you make the rest of us look bad. Oh. I mean, my goodness. Really? We've peaked right there. Oh, no, it's only downhill for me. <laughs> no other feedback matters. We've peaked, Miss Hart. Full stop. End of the book. Closed. Oh, but you are just as lovely. By ingesting our content, you uh, indirectly get our loveliness. So thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we are very thankful. Yeah, feedback, good, bad, otherwise, or beautiful and heartfelt like this. Give it all to us. I feed off this stuff, Miss Hart. All right, the next one. Why you no know, play with me no more? This is Nasty that sent this one in. You know what, motherfucker? We played Halo last night. We played Halo Infinite last night. I know you sent these responses in a week ago, but that is null and void now because we played Halo last night and you were the first one to leave the party. So Ooh. you could have played more, but you left first. But we do love you. And yeah, we want to do more community gaming. It might not be live streamed and stuff like that, but just keep your eyes peeled to the socials or the, to the discords because when we are rolling out in, in a Halo or a game XY... We do post, yeah. We, we want to play and play with you all and, you know, get in the party chat and have a bit of a banter and a laugh and poke fun at each other and all that stuff. Also, Halo has that whole Discord connection now where you can kind of establish a, uh, like, a jump-in point where people can join you from Discord. So Damn! The I did not important. know that. From PC, though. I PC. related, but unrelated to this episode... Because there's no da native Discord client on the Xbox console, mm. I've started utilizing this app that you can install on the Xbox called Quarrel. Yeah. And it's like this virtual Discord uh, connective app that allows you to l link your Discord chat or, or you know Discord in general through Xbox. Yeah. So I worked with that during the week. It worked okay. There was some bugs. Because you are jumping through many hoops to try and get that audio through into the game, but it's doable. And uh, I think Dodgy Don linked me to this one. It might have been maybe Festivus last year. This was mentioned or earlier this year talking about Something sounds um, familiar about Discord it. chat. I'm pretty sure Don uh, linked that through. So thanks for that hookup because it works. Is it perfect? No, but it's free and it's some good patchwork. If you're playing on the PC and other people play on the Xbox, you can still go down Discord or there's the the, the Xbox app for PC players and uh, console players. So you've got options. Hmm. You've got options. Uh, this next one. I'd like to see a Mother's Day special episode, which may include restaurants to take your mum, favourite things you did with your mum, embarrassing stories, games she may like, giveaways, stories from the mums from about their 8-Bit Crew kids, shout-outs from the 8-Bit Crew to their mums. 
Not really a grievance, just an idea. So uh, for anyone uh, playing home, that is from Mama Loz there. So I think you know, she's had a bit of a taste. She had uh, her podcast debut this year. Yeah. It sounds to me like she wants back in on the action. It sounds like it. With a yearly episode just for her. Sounds like an idea. Sounds like something yeah. you can take on board. I think it could be fun. And, and getting maybe some recorded transcripts that we can chuck in from, from listeners mums and, and family members and you know yeah. we'll, we'll uh we'll put this on the list that the workshopping over christmas we're going to be working more than holidaying it feels like we've got a lot of stuff to talk through miss hart yeah but miss hart what is your biggest grievances gripes issues concerns regarding the hungry gamers and or 8 bit this can be directed at me directed at jono directed at yourself directed at us as a whole where you at i want to know who the freaking wise ass was in 8-bit who thought it was a genius thing to go and move overseas and make it incredibly difficult to line up times and content and gameplay with all the people that she wants to play with oh no spoilers it was me um yeah um being overseas has been really uh a thorn in the side unfortunately when it comes to making content being involved with things just because you know the time difference and obviously life matters as well so that is probably one of my biggest grievances because it's uh it's you feel it when you can't really get yourself involved in stuff so that's been a big well, pain and I didn't write this here because I didn't want you to see it. Hey, Brendan, why don't you just make a fucking anime podcast already? <laughs> Maybe I will. Maybe that'll be also <laughs> workshopped in the writer's room over Christmas. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Maybe I will. Maybe you should. Maybe I will. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree. Like, yeah, you're a bit silly to move overseas, but it's also for the right reasons. All for the right happy, reasons. And it's awesome. Yeah. You know, everyone over here is very happy for you and, and love that you're living your best life over there. But yeah, time zones are a son of a bitch. It is a bitch. And it makes things difficult to synchronize up to to get together and play things and, and just, you know, just do anything really. Have have that option at least to do anything, whether it be a movie watch along or video game and whatever. But you know what? We make it work. We do our we best. <laughs> yeah. We we don't you know, we don't always manage to sync up and play week after week. But you know, every few weeks we're managing to sort of find some time to jump into a game here or there and make some fun memories and uh, you know, have some chaos in some type of shooter or, or you know, co op based adventure. So uh yeah. You know, we can we can we can work on that and start planning out games that are coming out for next year as far as anything that we want to try and tackle together. Yeah. Cause I just know I know, you know, you're the more structured one out of the two of us. I am, and that's that's always my problem, is that I like I like time frames, I like knowing when we're starting and when we're finishing and all that sort of business. That's my little stickler side. But it is what it is. <laughs> But it's good because uh, I'm very much fast and loose, so it helps keep me on the rails too. And, and if we have deadlines and time frames, it will make it better for me and better for you because we're going to be on a bit more of a focused path. I say that as we're sort of getting towards an hour 30 yeah. recording time so far on Festivus. <laughs> so um, my grievance, uh, I'm going to look inwards first and say blind ambition is my grievance with 8-Bit and the Hungry Gamers, uh, even though we did scale back this year, you know, obviously we we sort of put the the 8-Bit Collective to bed for now and sort of just went more grassrootsy, small core group of people, tighter content, tighter release schedule. And I think we did really well overall. I think this year we've probably released more content in a calendar year than we ever have, mm. which is fantastic. And I'm very proud of ourselves for that. But... There was times where I still did bite off more than I could chew. Um, yeah, we released more content, but things like the Hungry Game Show, uh, it's it's sort of lapsed a little bit. I was had full intention to have an episode out every fortnight, and by you know by Q three Q four with everything and you know moving. I'm not really? making excuses, but like yeah, it went from fortnightly to three weeks to monthly. So maybe maybe not just putting fixed release scheduled dates on some of the special content is the smarter play, you know? Yeah. Or not talking about it, maybe just recording like 10 of them and then just having them in the chamber. That's sort of my intention is to just have this content ready to roll and then I can just pump them out so that way I don't have to try and Meet juggle deadlines. scheduling and, and recording and deadlines. So, yeah. so yeah. But um, 
yeah, and outside of that, we've had to sort of postpone some uh, yet unannounced projects that we had intended to release in 2021. Uh, you know, we've had some things on on the back burner that we we had full intention to to release throughout this year, but with scheduling and things, it just made it difficult. So you'll hopefully see some of these things be uh, you know wished into reality in in 2022 as far as our. Uh, as far as our uh, mission statement for the year, when you'll see that in in January, but yeah, it's 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 been tough as far as expectations meeting reality. Yeah, you know, I, I hate letting people down. That's that's one of my big uh, big sort of problems. And yeah, I, I say things with the best intentions, and <laughs> I feel it's it's going to happen, and then things get in the way, just like anime these these days. I am consumed by this. By this world, and I can't stop watching anime Just a tad. and playing anime-oriented <laughs> games now. And I need help, Miss Hart. I need an intervention, please. <laughs> yeah, it's like a podcast. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, so uh, we're going to jump into the last main question for Festivus before we sort of start moving into the back end and, and saying our goodbyes for this this week. But uh, here's the drop. My son tells me what 2022 will bring. Thanks. <laughs> Not the cleanest bite that I've cut together in my <laughs> life, that's for sure. My son tells me what 2022 will bring stinks is what it was meant to say. It's just the, the maybe the pacing on the wording was a bit off. It was too, too fast from Miss Hart and Frank Costanza there. Yeah, I was, I was going in blind. <laughs> going in blind. Also, I feel bad, but I, I missed... Um, after Jono's soundbite, we did have a response. And in the Frank Costanza voice, as far as biggest greetings with the uh, Hungry Gamers and 8-Bit, for the so-called Hungry Gamers, I'm not hearing enough about food, was their grievance. Really? I feel like sometimes we talk about it way too much at the start. <laughs> mm. we, we do talk about food a lot, but um, I don't want to say too much. But as far as when I was talking about the, the THG and 8-Bit related grievances, talking about content... Uh, that was planned for this year that had to be postponed that's as yet unannounced. Connect those breadcrumbs from that grievance to what I just said and you might have an idea as to something that might come out Connect in 2022. breadcrumbs. John is going to have a field day with you next year. <laughs> <laughs> he will. He will. But bring it on. Bring it on. Okay, so what are you not looking forward to in gaming in 2022? More battle passes, season passes, endless games. Mm. Uh, this one, I think this poor soul didn't see the not looking forward to because Horizon Forbidden West nah, is fair. what they're it's not fair. looking forward to in 2022. <laughs> I, I choose to believe that they didn't see the not and they're very excited for Forbidden West because I'm also very excited for Forbidden West in February of 2022. Uh, the next one, delays, they're unavoidable at this point. It's true. You can't be escaping them, that's for damn sure. But you know what? Delays, they're a necessary uh, thing within the industry to to make sure these things come out the way they're meant to, as we've said. you know, We've alluded to, I prefer a delay and a fully realized vision as opposed to something half-baked and rough. Yeah. Uh, the next one. The waiting for a game that captivates me and the OCE audience. It seems every year we have games that garner a lot of hype, but after a month of playing... The OCE drops off the bandwagon due to the population size and most games only have a three-month life cycle before all of you are playing against our uh, diehard sweats. I love that. So all you're doing is playing against diehard sweaties. I'll call them sweaties. Or there isn't anyone still playing games in the OCE. So we're talking about, uh, you know, live games. We're talking about potentially competitive shooters. Mm. Uh, even things like, um, like Valheim, remember? Like that game came out of nowhere. Came at you just totally unexpected, smashed in the face like Thor's hammer, hmm. and everyone was all about it. I don't know what the concurrent player base is on it anymore, but I'd say it's probably a lot less than it was six months ago. And then you look at things like those numbers we talked about with Battlefield 2042, where they got 70% of their player base gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. People are, it's, it's that sort of, um, you know, that Tinder mentality where it's like swipe left to swipe right, you know? It's it's just rapid, 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 playing up and done. Next one, next one, next one. Yeah, pretty and much. And sadly, that's the way we live these days. That's it. On to the next one. 
On to the next one, and uh, that is continued delays to games. So uh, mm. a lot of uh, delay discussion here. Uh, the next one, what are you not looking forward to in gaming in 2022? Did you write this one in, Miss Hart? But it's Brendan's continued journey into anime. Me and that person. <laughs> High five. Bunch of haters, bunch of haters. Trying to find the time and money to play the lineup of great games coming out in 2022. True. Yeah, a lot of time, a lot of cash. More overhyped unfinished games with no apologies from the companies. Yeah, no, no ownership being taken by these companies sometimes when they are... A bit underdone and a bit gross. And that jumps into incomplete game releases. Please just release them when they're ready. I think that's the statement right there. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one, that my PC will definitely require upgrading next year that, and that I don't want to spend the money on a graphics card because goddamn, that's expensive. Yeah, they are. It's getting worse. Uh, the next one, I think they also missed the knot in looking forward to because it says, which queen antics with the 8-bit crew at some point? <laughs> Or maybe they're it's not looking the forward to it because they're not very good in raids. <laughs> it got you getting angry because things aren't going well and then me fart assing around and not really giving a damn. I don't know. Maybe they're not looking forward to it. <laughs> and then the last one. Uh, this one comes from Mama Loz. Not being able to play games side by side with my boy when I want to. Aww. There's that whole I'm not, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed thing yeah. again. You know, that's... Uh, Cutting right to the heart there. That's ugh, hurts me deep. But um, you'll be down here, Mama, in a couple of weeks. We can play some games together Aww. over Christmas. It's a little co couch co-op. Yeah. Or maybe we'll play Mortal Kombat and I'll just kick her ass. <laughs> <laughs> and some couch co-op too. Yeah. Miss Hart, what are you not looking forward to in 2022? I'm not looking forward to the continual trend of gamers just fucking complaining and bullying dev teams into getting what they want. And then if the they don't get what they want, then the game's shit and they don't listen to their audiences. And uh, I've been on Reddit way too much and I can tell you all, all the big communities that they are just sad sacks of shit sometimes because like... Like the, the most recent one is Halo and the Halo Reddit is horrible. They just, I hate this game. They don't listen to us. They're shit. They're this, they're that. Oh, they, how did they, you know, it, it went from, oh, this is, this is rough. This is rough. And now it's too, it's a shit game. Like, I just, I just hate this whole mentality of just, you know, bullying them, harassing them on social media. And then if they don't listen to us, then it's shit. It's, it's 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 gotten worse and worse and worse and obviously social media is the pin like the the point of it like this social media grows and everything it's just it's just made it so like gamers just feel like they have the right to just yell into the void or yell directly at you know game devs and you know people that work for companies that make the games that they are supposed to like it makes me so mad to miss heart like yeah just because you've got a social media account Use that platform for good. Yeah, you can be you can be critical of a piece of content, good and bad, but you know, be constructive in the way you talk about it. Just because it's not exactly everything you want from the jump, it's not immediately the worst. It's not immediately shit. The devs aren't scum, they're not money hard. You know, all those things. Like look at it from a more constructive perspective and the world would be a much better place. But sadly, that's never gonna be the case because all the uh, you know the anonymous accounts where they you know they don't disclose who they are they can sit there in their ivory towers and throw poo at anything and anyone they want without fear of repercussion which is disgusting and it needs to end but sadly it's going to be an ongoing theme the more and more we go yeah. which sucks but yeah i'm i'm similar with you miss hart you know i'm not looking forward to more of the same you know more corrupt people in power more delays, more games being released unfinished, and yet more internet and social media related drama from general shitheads. You know, just just be better people. And uh, something else I'm also not looking forward to is next February 2022. Not only will I uh, probably be lonely and sad on Valentine's Day, but also it's going to be a absolute monster of a month as far as game release schedules. Obviously, we've seen Saints Row moved out of, of February. But still, we've got Dying Light 2 Stay Human, 
Horizon Forbidden West, Destiny 2, The Witch Queen, Sifu, and Elden Ring all dropping in that month. So it's going to be a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of pain with some of those games as far as the difficulty. Like I'm looking at you, Elden Ring. But oh my goodness, February is going to be a lot. I'm good. Just got Destiny now. Don't have to worry about something. See, all I want, like I just want to play... Horizon Forbidden West that whole month, but there's those other games there that I want to play too. So it's gonna be and you can't be left behind be on Destiny. You kind of have to catch up. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keep I'm so far up. behind already. Yeah, so far behind already. But um, yeah, that brings us to sort of the the closing words, and we sort of had had a question in there if people wanted to to add some input regarding uh, anything else they'd like to say or mention uh, from from the year that was so far. And uh, Limo has some pretty good news here. He says, welcome to my new baby girl, Nova. Welcome to the world, little cutie patootie. And also keep up the great work, 8-Bit. Thank you. Uh, Also, it was good to see 8-Bit come back with so many avenues of content this year. Good luck for the coming years. And I hope each podcast grows along with the brand. Also, I realized while entering this that I wasn't following 8-Bit on Twitter. How rude. I always thought I was because Brendan always retweets retweets the stuff. <laughs> I think that's a little bit of a jab at the end there of me and my social media usage. Am I just a shill? Am I just a shill for 8-Bit where I'm just retweeting and that's it? I mean, you, no. <laughs> you're, it's your brand. <laughs> you're proud of it. Why would not you not share your content? <laughs> uh, next one from Grox. Jesse, take a second from Story Mode Gaming to hear this as far as what Grox has to say, Far Cry 6, Halo Infinite Multiplayer and Forza Horizon 5 are 2021 gaming highlights for me. Highlights, not lowlights there, Jesse, you hater. In the words of Meatloaf, two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> I love old, like, I don't love Meatloaf now. He looks, he looks like a loaf of meat that's been out in the sun too long, but like... His early music and then some of his acting prowess with Rocky Horror Picture Show and Fight Club. I mean, that was his prime, right? And it only got worse from after that. <laughs> it really. Maybe he got punched a few times for real. No, he has a lot of health issues Club. and he didn't want to look after himself. Yeah. But uh, moving on. Sending you love and high fives this holiday season. Thank you for the constant supply of podcasts and laughs. Thank you. Thank you indeed. Uh, next one. Really enjoyed the more focused content in 2021. The core 8-bit shows available constantly delivered high-quality content. Much love! Aww. Exclamation point. The next one. This one cracked me up too when we were recording it and it's going to live on in my mind forever. Mm. Uh, that line Ali dropped about comparing Dorito fingers <laughs> to fingering Garfield had me crying laughing. Easily a top five Hungry Gamers line. Yeah, I confirm 110%. That is one of the best things I've ever heard in this studio. I think it got the point across at least. <laughs> it really did. Perfect way to describe so, the situation. I was so worried too because after I said it and thought about it, I'm like, ah, some people listen to this show in the morning. <laughs> Any time's a good time for a sneaky finger. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Spat on my mic. All right. The next the next one from Nobu. You both are still my favorite gaming podcast to listen to. Your consistency and laid back humor is what makes it such a treat to listen to. I wish you both all the best for the future. And I am looking forward to it when you hit the special 300 episodes next year. God damn. Oh, I also won last year's prize, so I want two for two this year. <laughs> I said, Kay, thanks. Oh, my God, what the fuck barbecue? I haven't seen that in ages. That's from, like, <laughs> way back when. Yeah, so three, we've got 300, our 300th episode coming up next year. Yeah, That's dude. bonkers. Because <laughs> we're going to finish, I think, with the quick maths. I think we're going to finish at about 270 for the year. I think. Or just done. Maybe 269. Maybe just under, yeah. Just under. Giddy up. But, uh, yeah, on our way to 300, uh, Benny says, stay thirsty. It's our cocktail master right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where's uh, where, Benny? I know you're listening. Where's more uh, episodes of Cocktail Club? Uh, what are you doing, mate? Uh, we need a few more for that feed. But they are great content. Go listen to Cocktail Club. Great concept and uh, really well done there by Benny. 
Uh, next one, shout out to the 8-Bit crew for being my travel buddies to and from work, getting me through parts of my day and letting me get lost in the laughs instead of focusing on the boring old work I have to do. Keep doing what you're doing and remember there's a lot of love for you guys. Stay hungry. Oh, no, see, see, he listens to it in the morning. He had to hear that. <laughs> he does indeed, yeah. But he's but he's nasty, used to our uh, brand of humor. That's <laughs> <laughs> a uh, you know just general conversation between us and Nasi. So he's all right. Yeah, there's a chance you're going to get offended or disgusted at any time of the day you're listening to this Pretty show. Pretty much. Yeah, and uh, the next one here. Congratulations, uh, congratulations to another year of keeping us entertained, informed, and laughing along with you all at the Hungry Gamers HQ. Thanks, Can't Mama wait Lass. for another year of shenanigans. Much love. Thank you, Mama Lars. So, Miss Hart, that brings us to the end of Festivus for 2021. Anything else you'd like to say? No, it was a great Festivus, some great comments and some great feedback as well. So, uh, another fantastic year and uh, take what, we, what we've got and move forward. Exactly, exactly. And, and moving forward, obviously, yeah, this is our third last episode for 2021. Mm. Next week is the 2021 biddies. So, you've still got a week give or take, to get your answers in, to go into the draw to win 1500 bucks worth of swag from us. So we're talking some of the games that are our fam- favorite releases from the year. We're talking an Audio-Technica Creator Pack Pro. So if you're looking to get into content creation, you're going to have that. We're also talking about um, you know, some Pokemon 25th Anniversary TCG. We're talking about 8-Bit-related swag, guest spots onto the podcast, and a whole host of other other things. So... Head on over to 8bit.net forward slash win. Get your entries in. Cost you no money. Going to take you a couple of minutes max to put those responses in. And we will announce the winners, or I guess the major winner that's going to win all the things, as well as two minor winners that are going to be taking away some Audio-Technica gaming headsets and 8-Bit Founders coins for submitting your responses here for Festivus, as well as the biddies. And uh, following the biddies is going to be our last episode of the year, which we are calling Our Favourite Things. Mm. And so that's going to be Ali and I just talking about things that we've experienced or discovered for the first time in 2021. Yeah. So could be games, movies, TV show, food, uh, and they don't necessarily have to have debuted in 2021. No. It's just we've tried them for the first time in this year. So it's going to be it's going to be nice and relaxing and fun discussion. Good way to end the year. Yeah, just us and, talking um, about like things that we got to experience for the first time. Yeah, like finger and cats. Oh God! <laughs> I experienced that for the first time in podcast form. That's what I'm implying. Uh huh. But also, as that episode is a new concept for us, what's even cooler, that this will be the first time we're going to ever record The Hungry Gamers live and you can jump on in and interact and watch and listen along over on YouTube. So we're talking youtube.com forward slash we are 8 bits. So you haters that were dropping in comments earlier in Facebook. (laughs) (laughs) They weren't haters, I'm just asking. You know, we we had a lot of problem with you people being impatient for us for not getting on live streams, but we're doing it. Our last episode for the year is going to be the debut of THG Live, I guess you could say. Hungry Gamers Live. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash we are 8 bits on Saturday, December the 18th for Australian listeners and viewers uh, otherwise it's going to be friday december the 17th in the afternoon we're, we're going to be jumping on at around probably 10 a.m 10 30 a.m mm. australian eastern standard time or daylight savings time, whatever it is it's going to be 10 to 10 30 a.m new south wales victorian time and uh you can jump on in interact with us Watch a little bit behind the curtain, see how these episodes come together. Yeah, and, see these. Uh, get in on the insanity hairy that is the Hungry Gamers. Podcasters. So much facial hair. So much facial hair. Yeah, but it's going to be fun. But yeah, um, Miss Hart, that brings us to the end of Festivus 2021. Is that it? We out? I think we are definitely out. I hope you enjoyed that nice, uh, extra long uh, episode. Yeah, yeah, it's one know. of the longest ones we've done all year. So, uh, yeah, Festivus is great. Uh, go go rewatch the Festivus episode of in Seinfeld. 
it's one of the goats and uh, I love it. And that's where we obviously, we take the inspiration to make this uh, episode. Sadly, no feats of strength here, but uh, you know, we all both know that Ali would whoop my ass in any form of feat of strength. Hands down. So she's just the the winner without even uh, having to go into combat and battle with myself because I would be the loser. But I've got that pole, right? Like <laughs> You do have that pole. <laughs> you do have that pole. And uh, I don't have any tinsel because I find it too distracting. But anyway... 8-Bit Nation, thanks each and every one of y'all for stopping on by. It's been our pleasure to bring you Festivus 2021. But until next week, much love and stay hungry. You've been listening to The Hungry Gamers, one of many gaming and geek culture related podcasts from the 8-Bit Collective over on 8bit.net. Check out more episodes on your podcast service of choice. And while you're there, please be sure to rate and subscribe. Until next time, boys and girls, stay hungry.